Empower Radio presents Out of the Fog. Join intuitive guide and spiritual teacher Karen Hager for lively, positive conversation with lightworkers, healers, and dynamic wisdom keepers. Get ready for inspiration and connection. This is Out of the Fog on Empower Radio. Here's your host, Karen Hager. Hello and welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm Karen Hager. Each week at this time, we gather for a spiritual conversation with enlightening guests, and I'm glad you're here. Now, if you want more Out of the Fog, you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook where I'm Fog City Psychic. You can also connect through my website, karenhager.com. Today's guest knows that living in your feminine brings more flow, more abundance, more fulfillment to life. But what does it mean to invite feminine energy and to ground our lives in that space? Elena Poisson is my guest today. She's here to share her wisdom about magnetizing our paths to receive more good things. Are you ready to meet her? Eleanor de Passon is a spiritual teacher, intuitive business mentor, healer, speaker, and author. She helps women entrepreneurs, leaders, and way showers run their business and their life from their feminine energy so that they can magnetize more wealth, alignment, and flow while impacting humanity in their unique way. LA's new book is The Path of Femininity, The Six Gifts of Your Sovereignty, and she's the host of the Sacred Roots podcast. Her gifts are depth, wisdom, and practical leadership. With these gifts, she leads her clients and us, I hope, in this interview to have a more soul-led business and life. You can find out more about LA and her work at eleanordepasson.com. That's E-L-E-O-N-O-R-E-D-E. P-O-S-S-O-N.com, Eleanor de Poisson.com. L.A., welcome to Out of the Fog. Thank you, Karen. I'm really excited to be having this conversation with you today because I think we are going to talk about very interesting things together. Oh, good. If it's boring, we'll just leave. We'll just stop. If it's, <laughs> if it's not interesting, we'll just, no, that's it. We got to go. Um, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> what does it What does it mean to live in your feminine? Because I think feminine energy, I think that term gets a bad rap and I think it's badly misunderstood. Yeah. So I would like to answer this question by starting to share a little story because I definitely had a very bad image perspective of what feminine energy was. When I was a teenager until I was 20, 25 years old, I was friends with three girls and we were always hanging out together. We were really besties. And our mojo was to say, we are not girls. So in French, it was, on n'est pas des filles. And we would say that all the time. And that basically meant we are not hysterical, uh, weak, emotional, with too much makeup kind of girls. <laughs> That's what we saw as being a woman, being in your feminine energy. We actually meant we are more strong, badassy, ambitious, powerful woman. And what I didn't realize is that I was actually saying we are not from the wounded feminine. We are from the divine feminine. And so instead of separating masculine and feminine, We were actually just wanting to be in our power, but because we didn't know there was a difference between these two, we were just saying, oh, well, we're more like men because, you know, they are the badasses. (laughs) (laughs) And so really being in your feminine today, um, your divine feminine here, it's really that part of yourself that knows that you can have a very healthy relationship with your emotions because they are guides. So whenever you feel anger, whenever you feel frustration or sadness, you really sit with it and listen to it and grow from the discomfort of feeling that emotion. Because every emotion is a teacher. Being in your feminine, it also means being very intuitive. Instead of being more masculine, which is very logical and rational and has structures, it's going more with the flow. So to give you a very concrete example, I wrote two books. My first book was The Self-Healing Spiral, A Method to Help You Heal from Trauma. And then I wrote the second book that you read, Karen, The Path of Femininity. And so my first book, I wrote it in a very masculine way. 
I remember I woke up one day, um, this was three years ago, four years now, and I was like having a huge download. I have this method, I'm healing myself. I was just going through a divorce and everything. I want to help other women heal themselves. I can see how healing works in six steps. So I'm going to write a book about it. And I basically started with writing the table of contents. And then I would wake up every morning at eight, do a short meditation, start writing at nine and write until 6 p.m. and start over the next day. Wow. Yeah. It was very pushy, very structured, very ambitious, very driven, and it worked, but eventually it also um, started feeling misaligned and exhausting. And that's what the masculine is when you're too much in your masculine, because that energy is warm. It's related to the sun. You really have warm energy in your body that is going to burn you out. Hmm. Even our language knows about it. You burn because you're too much in the warm energy. As the feminine is more cold energy, it's connected to the moon. So you, you need to balance that. And so my second book, the way I wrote it, is the perfect example of how you function with your creativity and your intuition when you are in your feminine energy. Um, I got the hint in a meditation that I needed to write about feminine energy. And I didn't start right away. I was like, okay, I'll see. I'll see what comes true. I see what I feel like writing. And I started writing a few things and then I didn't have a lot of clarity or where the book was going to go, but I just kept going. And then in the middle of the night, I got a huge download. If you read the book, it's the whole story is explained in the introduction, but I got basically woken up in the middle of the night and received some teachings. And it was a whole path of initiation and really understanding what feminine energy is myself through embodiment. Because feminine energy is very embodied. You're very in your body. You're actually very, it's a very earthy energy, very grounded energy. And so I would really write that book when I was inspired, when something had happened to me, an experience, and I really learned something from it. And I could see how it could add value to the book. Then I would add that there. Um, so it's completely different because it's much more flowy, much more intuitive. It's not structured. It's not, there's no pressure and it's much easier. I'm so that's basically, if that answers your question, no, I can it, talk about it for hours. But. Oh, it does. No, it does. And it, what's really interesting in this is that the first approach I get up at eight and I, whatever it is, eat my breakfast and then I write and then I it that's what we might consider the disciplined approach and yeah. yet sometimes yeah. that disciplined approach leads to breakdown leads to confusion leads to exhaustion and and the way you created this book and in quotes undisciplined approach mm -hmm. has created something really intuitive and beautiful and heartful mm -hmm. I'm sure the first book is intuitive and beautiful and heartful too but the way you got there is completely different um, it's completely different, but also, um, if you get a chance to read the first book, the method is beautiful, but I actually created something by bringing things that already existed together. Mm -hmm. Whereas what is in this book, everything is, is new or is something that I have not read anywhere. Maybe a few things uh, were inspired by some of my spiritual teachers and so on, but Mostly the whole book is, is, is channeled somehow. Can you, it's completely different. Can you say a little bit about how intuition and emotions do help guide? You said they're guides mm -hmm. for us. We've been taught, I think a lot of us, and maybe especially women, that our emotions are bad, that, mm -hmm. that we're too emotional, that we should suppress them or we should kind of mm -hmm. manipulate them. So how do they guide us? Mm, I love that question. Yes, we've been conditioned to be disciplined and be more masculine because that's how society functions. And we've been then also conditioned to believe that our emotions were bad. We've basically been conditioned to let the feminine down and just uh, not consider, not take her too seriously or not embody her. Whereas she really is our, our superpower. It's that part of herself that honors her emotions because emotions come from your psyche, come from your ego. And they're just there to tell you, knock, knock, there's something in there that is uncomfortable. 
or I'm feeling anger. Why am I feeling angry? What's, what's wrong? And for example, anger is a beautiful messenger because anger is just telling you that one of your boundaries has been crossed. And as women, we're really good at understanding people's needs and um, giving others what they desire. And we have a tendency to be people pleasers. And sometimes it's at our own expense. But we don't, we don't always realize that before it's too late. And so the anger is there knocking at your door, the door of your heart, telling you, uh-oh, this is not okay. I'm actually not respecting myself when I do that. So the anger is there to tell you, how can I set a boundary and how, how could I actually say no next time in order to respect myself, honor myself, even though I want to help someone or be nice to someone or whatever it is, the anger is actually, the anger is really there to protect you. So the divine feminine has a very healthy relationship with her anger. She's not afraid of expressing her anger. And as women, we're so good at suppressing our anger because we've been told as little girls, don't, don't scream, don't be too loud, be nice. You know, the whole good girl behavior, be nice, smile, dress well. And I, I share a whole story in the book of how my grandmother was really the archetype of the woman that was always beautifully dressed, but would never talk. And there's a quote in, in Belgium, in French, that we say a lot, uh, which is Sois belle et tais-toi, which basically means be beautiful and shut up. Mm. And so that whole good girl behavior of like, you have to be beautiful, but not say what you think has taught us not to express our emotions and especially not our anger. Because what would you look like if you're angry? You would be dishonored, right? Yeah. No, actually, your anger is there to set a boundary. And, and of course, there's a way to express it if you do it in a hysterical way. It's not going to be respectful for you either, because then you're going to be disappointed in yourself. But you can express your anger in a very healthy, firm and calm way, which is a very healthy way of setting boundaries. Um, now, when we think about sadness, sadness is just a way to release a way to heal. We really have to see the tears rolling down our cheeks as the pain that is coming out through our eyes and really getting out of our body. We're letting go, letting go of disappointments, of expectations that were met, or of hopes that we had. And it's very, very healing. This is why usually after crying, we feel like sleeping. Because the body is readjusting, the body has let go of something, and there's now space for something else to come through. So this is, you know, as valuable for men than for women. We all have feminine energy that is just inviting us to honor all these emotions, to listen to the messages that they have for us, and to really honor and welcome them through feeling them. And it's I get the feeling from reading the book that this is about accepting and feeling into our feminine energy without fear of it. Um, mm. Because the other thing about feminine energy, sometimes it's talked of as something that's, that's weak. And sometimes it's talked of like a weapon as a weapon. Mm -hmm. right? But what I'm Dark hearing thing. you talk about is yeah. using it with, with power and clarity and to, um, attract, magnetize. Absolutely. Yes, because the feminine has uh, different gifts. So that's what I talk about in the book is that when you understand what your feminine energy is. So the first part of the book really explains what feminine energy is, how to differentiate it from the masculine and even differentiate the wounded from the divine feminine. And then once you are excited to go on that journey, the fe feminine has six gifts to unleash for you. And these are actually natural gifts that you already had within you but because of the conditioning of life and parents and teachers and movies and whatever it is these gifts were really pushed down and one of these gifts like you just said is magnetism when you are in your feminine energy you're connected to your power to your intuition that guides you because your intuition is just the language of your soul you honor your emotions you're super authentic 
you become magnetic. Because think about it, the more you show up with authenticity, the more people either are going to love you or dislike you. But that makes you more magnetic because you express more of yourself and people who resonate with you are basically going to recognize some of themselves in you. And very often we are afraid of being too much. Again, it comes back to this whole conditioning of you have to be the good girl. Don't be the bad girl. Don't be too angry. Don't be too noisy. Don't dress too sexy. How many times have we heard that? Yeah. A lot of times. We're afraid of being too much. But what if that thing that we're afraid of sharing, what if that too, what if that too muchness was actually what we came here to be? What if that was our superpower? and allowed us to magnetize the right people to us. I remember um, I, I got married five years ago now, and then my husband left me six months after we got married. And I realized that I didn't love myself. And so I had married someone who couldn't love me either. And I was a people pleaser, always trying to make everybody happy. And I was, wasn't very respectful of myself, my desires and my dreams. I was just trying to fit in basically. And then I went through a whole healing process with uh, the self-healing spiral that I wrote. And um, the day after I signed the paper of my divorce, I met someone. Oh, it was a very interesting synchronicity. And I remember at the time I was not interested at all <laughs> to be in any kind of relationship, but I really thought if I'm going to be in any sort of relationship, even if it's just a summer thing or a night thing, it doesn't matter. I want to be fully myself. I am never going to compromise myself again. And so we were at the birthday party um, dancing and he tapped on my shoulder he was like hey do you speak English I was like yeah I do because um, he's English and he's now my husband mm. and so we were on the dance floor and I remember that after five minutes we were talking about near-death experiences and the perspective of different religions on religions on death so imagine having that very deep spiritual conversation in the middle of the dance floor five minutes after you've met someone most guys would have run away. <laughs> and that's fine because I'm not meant to be with most guys. But he loved it. He was like, wow, that girl is punchy. And he said, well, you want to grab a glass and let's just go outside and talk. And we talked for four hours. And our conversations are really out there, but super interesting. And we just keep talking about, keep talking about everything. <laughs> and it's really because I allowed myself to really be fully myself knowing very well that it would scare men away, but attract the right ones to me. You're listening to Out of the Fog, and I'm talking with Elaida Poisson. Her new book is The Path of Femininity, The Six Gifts of Your Sovereignty. You can find out more about Elaida and her work at eleonordepoisson.com. That's E-L-E-O-N-O-R-E-D-E-P-O-S-S-O-N, eleonordepoisson.com. And Elaida, you were telling us about how when you showed up in your authentic self, that you met someone, the man who became your husband, because you stopped playing games, mm -hmm. right? Stop pretending. Is that related to how we, how we are when we're looking at attracting abundance, when we're magnetizing ourselves for, for people, for opportunity, for mm -hmm. connection, mm -hmm. for greater love? Absolutely. It works. It works for everything because abundance, money is just love made visible. Mm. It's love from the people. It's love from spirit. It's, um, it's energy and movement that you magnetize to you. And actually, I would go even further saying that the more you love yourself, the more you honor yourself, show up with no compromise, the more people are going to love you or not love you, but you're not meant to be loved by anyone anyway. And that is going to magnetize a lot of wealth and abundance to your life for sure, because abundance is just love made visible. Hmm. 
How do we get started tapping into that? You were talking about that. What if that too muchness was your superpower? Mm -hmm. The way I feel about abundance is abundance is the principle that says there is always more. There's enough and there's more. How do we start to kind of uh, actualize that magnetism? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a whole journey, but I think that you really start by honoring that too muchness and expressing it, even if it's very scary. And actually, the more scary it is, the more you should do it. Hmm. In my book, I also talk about the three feminine wounds, the bitch wound, the witch wound, and the horror wound. And these are three different ways that um, women and men as well uh, stay small are afraid of sharing all of themselves. And the witch wound in particular is that part of yourself that is afraid of sharing all her intuitive gifts, all her experiences and express all of herself because she's afraid of being burned at stake. So nowadays we're not gonna be burned anymore, but there's something that's very powerful in social media and it's called the cancel culture. People just show up, criticize you, put you down. They're not afraid of uh, saying very harsh things, leaving very harsh comments on your social media just because you're being yourself. And so it can be very scary. But the more you show up with yourself, uh, with the, yeah, your whole personality being fully yourself, the more you're going to become um, magnetic. So I would say it's really starting there. And um, something that's also very important to understand is that feminine energy is about receiving. Whereas masculine energy is about giving. Mm. And so when you have a business, you're in your masculine energy. Right now, the both of us, Karen and I, we are in our masculine because we're talking, we're exchanging, we're doing, we're sharing our gifts with the world. We're not very much being. So being is the feminine, doing is the masculine. And when you're in your masculine all the time, that means that you are giving to the universe and your clients the feminine receiving role. Everyone that's listening to us right now is in their feminine. Mm. You are receiving our information. So when you want to sign new clients or when you want people to show up for your group programs or your whatever it is that you're doing, you actually need to be in your feminine as well so that they can be in their masculine, take action and sign up for your program. So as an entrepreneur, it's very important to be aware when you're in your feminine and when you're in your masculine so that you can have a balance and actually really create sacred union between these two energies to magnetize all the abundance that wants to come in your life. Because maybe the only block that you're having right now is that you're too busy. And because you're too busy, there's no space for these potential clients to come to you and to give you their money which is just love made visible. Mm. That's beautiful. I think I need to write. I have a place here above my desk where I write things that have moved me. That's something that's going over my desk. That abundance is love made visible. Money is love made visible. Um, right? Work sometimes mm -hmm. is love made visible. Now Absolutely. I know we're, we're just up at the end of our time. There is a, a free gift available to listeners on your website. Can you tell them how they can connect with you and how they can get more information and where can they find the book? Of course. So if you go on my website, um, you will see on the top right is written the gift quiz. So it's basically a quiz that's going to help you identify which gifts of your feminine you already have activated inside of you and which need a little bit more love and attention. And um, you can find more information about me, of course, on my website, but the best place to connect with me is on Instagram. I am quite active there and um, I do very often lives and I share about all my offerings. And today I'm just launching actually a new offer, which is a 21 day course to embody your divine feminine. So it's a beautiful course with a lot of meditations, third eye activations, Reiki for abundance, a lot of teachings about uh, 
um, how money energy is sexual energy as well. I mean, it's a really beautiful course that I'm really excited to be sharing with the world as of today. Oh my gosh. So that's great. So that is all at eleonordepossant.com or on Instagram at L-A de Poisson, E-L-E-D-E-P-O-S-S-O-N. L-A, thank you so much. The clock has caught us, but thank you so much for coming and thank sharing you. some wisdom with us. Thank, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. That is Aleda Poisson. Her new book is The Path of Femininity, The Six Gifts of Your Sovereignty. You can find out more. Go take that quiz at eleonordepoisson.com to find out about which divine feminine attributes you are already embodying and which ones, as she said, might need a little bit more love. Find her on Instagram at as she is uh, L.A. de Poisson. And of course, you're always welcome over at karenhager.com. That's my website. It's a good place to find out about upcoming classes and events. And if you'd like to connect voice to voice for some intuitive insight and perspective on your own journey, you're welcome to do that too. That's all at karenhager.com. I am on Instagram and Facebook at Fog City Psychic. And thank you for listening today. Together, we are spreading a little more light in the world and a little more light is always a good thing. Until next time, I'm wishing you peace. Peace.